pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this regularly scheduled meeting of Bowling Green City Council. We are really pleased that you're all with us this evening. Thank you. Okay, would you please begin by calling the roll? Osbacher? Here. Harold? Here. Hollenbaugh? Here. Jeffers? Here. Robinette? Here. Roland? Here. Zanfordino? Here. The minutes from the meeting that was held on November 18th, 2018 were presented to council prior to this meeting. Are there any additions or corrections to these minutes? Seeing none, is there a motion to approve? So moved. moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. The minutes are approved as presented. Okay, correspondence this evening. Uh, yes, I have two items this evening. Uh, one is from Finance Director Brian Bouchong, is a listing of budget transfers to be made for the month of December, and those were distributed to you prior to the meeting and require your approval. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve the budget transfers? So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. The budget transfers are approved as presented. And um, also before you tonight, I distributed a copy of a uh, commission appointment requested by Mayor Edwards. Um, the appointment of to the traffic commission of Rick Beaverson is an ex officio member. He was recently promoted to the public works superintendent position and would be filling the vacancy created by the retirement That's of Mike Hammer. So that requires your um, confirmation as well. Mr. President, I move that we approve the uh, appointment. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. The appointment is approved as presented. And that's all I have. Great. Thank you, Kay. Now turn to Mayor Edwards for a special recognition. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President, uh, members of council and all assembled. We do have one of these things we do on periodically. Um, so very important to our community that uh, on behalf of the Human Relations Commission, we single out someone for special attention and, and applause for doing good work in the community and to help us uh, <coughs> with this uh, process and understand here, I'm going to call on Jennifer Dever, the co-chair of the Human Relations Commission, and, um, and also Sheila Brown. And I know there are other members of the Human Relations Commission here as well. And uh, would you, if you would like to come forward, the other co-chair, Mary Jane Saunders and, and Ellie. Okay, fine. I'll turn it over to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The Bowling Green Human Relations Commission <coughs> is committed to promoting respect for diversity and encouraging positive interactions among diverse citizens of Bowling Green. To that end, Several times a year, the Human Relations Commission recognizes and applauds individuals, organizations, and local businesses who work together to promote diversity initiatives and work to improve the well-being of persons in need here at home or far away by presenting them with an Honor Roll Award. On behalf of the Commission, I would like to present the Honor Roll Award to Carla Davis McGowan. Mrs. Davis McGowan is a longtime resident of Bowling Green and is active in the community. She serves as a regional training coordinator for Lucas County Children's Services. And for the past several years, she's been a strong voice in the education of our community on the issue of human trafficking. Mrs. Davis McGowan is a member of Not In Our Town and often attends meetings where she raises awareness of is on issues of diversity and trafficking. In addition, she's placed several children with foster parents here in Bowling Green and continuously encourages families to become foster parents. Mrs. D Mrs. Davis McGowan loves to conduct fundraisers for worthy causes and has opened her home on several occasions to host such gatherings. Our community has benefited from Carlos Dav Davis McGowan's interest in keeping Bowling Green a welcoming and inclusive city, and the Human Relations Commission is pleased to recognize her with this award. If you could come up. <coughs> I can read that. 
Please do. Yes. <clears throat> if I may, Mrs. McGowan, uh, the Human Relations Commission of the City of Bowling Green proudly presents the Honor Roll Award to Carla McGowan. The Human Relations Commission Honor Roll Award recognizes and applauds individuals, organizations, and local businesses who work together to promote diversity initiatives and work to improve the well-being of persons in need here at home or far away. Your collective efforts benefit the Bowling Green community, and we sincerely thank you. Signed by in my role as mayor and also by the co-chair of the Human Relations Commission. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I stood here before and, and said something about my father saying that Bowling Green was like Mayberry, and I was like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> but no disrespect once again. It's just a town that is very, a very safe place uh, to be. Um, January is human trafficking. Uh, awareness month so I'm coming at you guys again because uh, I want to make sure that BG is uh, continues to be a safe place um, no it's not a, happening here a lot but just a little bit is too much so um, in January again I'm gonna be coming at you for uh, some type of preventative the church the the churches the um, school I'm a little nervous there because uh, <laughs> but the churches the schools, the hospital, children's services, you know, uh, colleges, um, we need to all come together and make sure it doesn't happen in our town. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like to introduce your family at all? Okay. So I'm a new grandmother like three years ago. I have a three-year-old, um, Nyla Burks. Um, I have two that's not here. My son, Jordan McGowan, uh, is in Bryan, Ohio now. I have Olivia McGowan, my middle child, born and raised here in Bowling Green, safe Bowling Green. <laughs> Ella McGowan is not here. She's in St. Louis. Uh, she's a chef. Um, my husband, ooh, oh, yes, him. Uh, he's everything. Grandpa. Right, he's grandpa. He's, he's everything. He's the reason why I can do a lot of these things. And Kendra, you guys know Kendra. She uh, high school as well, so we're here. And Carla and Sheila is family as well. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Hi, William. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much for that presentation, and Carla, thank you for the work that you do. It is very much appreciated. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's transition to lobby visitation. Is there anyone who is registered to um, address council? Uh, Ken Riemann. We do ask those that have um, signed up for lobby visitation to approach the microphone and clearly state your name and address for our record, please. I'm Ken Riemann. I live at 623 North Winter Garden uh, here in Bowling Green. I am currently chairman of the Bowling Green Recycling Center. Um, we're glad to see the support that we heard in the committee meeting here uh, for recycling. Uh, it's always hard to make changes. Uh, and a little history lesson, uh, recycling started in 1978. Uh, Curbside, sorted curbside, started in 1988, and commingled curbside was 2008. And Dave and I, and I guess even Scott, in his younger years, have all been here for all of those years. So we've got some history there. Um, I'd like to clarify something that was reported in the news. I'm not sure how it got put there. But we do want to clarify that the only curbside collected material in Bowling Green that we have, that the recycling center has landfilled has been the 15% trash that's collected with the curbside recyclables. I think the, the, the mayor to be here got quoted either 
correctly or incorrectly. It really doesn't matter. But I just want to, that a lot of things were being landfilled. Well, we know other places have had to landfill things. We've been very careful about that, and we've always prided on ourselves on something that if we take it, it gets recycled. And that's one of the reasons you saw books were discontinued, because we weren't sure what we are going to be able to do with it. Uh, but I just, I just want people to know that the money that they spent recycling and the effort they spent recycling, it always got recycled. I think that's important for people to know. Um, as we reported, as we reported in, the, in the previous committee meeting, the recycling center is going to discontinue accepting city curbside recyclables the 31st of December. Um, we didn't submit a proposal to uh, process the curbside recyclables. There were a whole laundry list of reasons. Uh, like most things, when you make a decision, it isn't one thing. Um, but the disappearance of newspaper, which was the foundation of recycling, and the age of our equipment were major decisions. We've always said that our mission was to recycle as much and as many things as economically possible. And we didn't necessarily have to be the ones doing it. So when we made that decision, we said, okay, we saw that there's a lot of costs there, uh, and maybe it was time to, to see if somebody else could, could do something. We did submit an alternative proposal for maintaining the 24-hour drop-off, uh, with or without curbside. We thought that would give council an option to make some decisions. Um, long term, the jury's still out. But we feel sorted drop-off collection may be the only way to maintain affordable residential recycling long term. And as you had the discussion, the question is, how much are you willing to pay when it comes to that? Um, the 24-hour drop-off is a lot more, uh, less, more cost-effective. You don't have the cost of collection. You don't have the cost of sorting. You don't have trash in it. There's only about a half a percent of trash in it. Uh, and the other thing is the materials come in and can have a greater value. And what I say by that is newspaper comes in as newspaper. And that actually has a pretty good value because there isn't any real newspaper today for the insulators that are making insulation. What happens to mixed recycling is that that newspaper becomes either a residential paper or mixed paper. Residential paper has a value of five dollars a ton. Mixed paper, which is paper collected with glass, has a value of a negative five dollars a ton. It's the way you it's the way you collect it. Curbside recycling is convenient recycling. It doesn't get you the highest value recycling all the time. That's the way the system works. <coughs> Um, so in the drop-off, we're able to collect newspapers, newspaper. And in referring to newspaper as one of our decisions, um, you should know that over the last couple of years, we've struggled with, with the newspaper, which is a significant uh, quantity of the material that comes in. We've had two of our buyers say that it does not meet specifications, so we couldn't sell to them. We're on the third one and selling it as newspaper. But I can tell you that in the last week, we've been called and told, you know, guys, we got problems with this material. Uh, it's not their fault. We look at it. We can't make it any better. And part of the problem is there's no newspaper there. It's fiber. There was a 1,000 tons of newspaper back 10 years ago. It was 500 last year. It's 300 this year. It's, it's going to go down. So that was a major factor and just tells you so, some of the challenges that are going on. Um, we do have an agreement with the city to continue the 24-hour drop-off. Um, I wouldn't say that the amount we came up with was very scientific. It was a, it was a number thrown out by, by Mike Marsh. We felt that council and we needed to find a way to make a transition and to make it as smoothly as possible. And rather than go back and forth and say, well, it ought to be this, it ought to be that, the board made the decision, says, let's agree to it, let's see how it works. But what I can tell you that is in today's current economy, we will be losing money. Now, will the markets come back? I don't know. 
we're going to try it. We're going to see how it works. But I guess I would tell you that at some point we may come back and say, this is where we're at. Do you support putting out more money for this or don't you? And that'll be a con because once you get to zero in your, in your checkbook, you're to zero in your checkbook, but we're committed to trying to make it work as long as we can for the community. Um, in regards to the to discontinuing the curbside operation, um, we want to acknowledge the workers from WLI. These people have been the backbone of the curbside sorting operation. They will be looking for jobs. These are people, these people are the reason we were able to establish a commingled curbsiding operation 10 years ago when there was nobody else in the area that was offering that type of service. When that curbside sort operation went in, it was the only sort facility probably within about a 100 mile radius. It's still one of the very few. As you know, when you talked about where your recycling's going, it's gonna be moving about 80 miles away. But the WLI people are the reason we could do that because we had people that would come to work every day and they spend three or four hours doing what could probably be an episode on Mike Rose Dirty Jobs. It's not very nice some days, okay? And they come back the next day happy to do the job again. So what I want to say is that there's been a lot said in this community about trouble finding good help to fill jobs. These people are good help. When their capabilities are matched with the job, everybody benefits. And I want to ask the employers who are looking for help to contact WLI and see if these people can meet your needs. Uh, I want to thank you for supporting recycling. Thank you. <laughs> That's all. Very good. Thank you for those comments. Moving on uh, on our agenda to the introduction of new legislation. <clears throat> Mr. President. Mr. Robinette. I have an ordinance uh, from the Planning, Zoning, and Economic Development Committee amending and adopting sections 150.03, 150.16, 150.51, 150.52, 150.53, 103 of the codified ordinances of the city of Bowling Green, Ohio, regarding zoning code regulations. Thank you, Greg. President, Mr. Jeffers. From the Finance Committee, I have a resolution transferring previously appropriated funds, an ordinance providing supplemental appropriations for the current expenses and other expenditures of the city of Bowling Green, Ohio during the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2019 and ending December 31, 2019. An ordinance to provide appropriations for the expenses and other expenditures of the City of Bowling Green, Ohio for the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2020 and ending December 31, 2020. An ordinance authorizing the Municipal Administrator to enter into contract or contracts with Republic Services for the acceptance of mixed recyclables and declaring an emergency. Thank you, Bruce. I have one ordinance from the Public Utility Committee. It is an ordinance accepting utility easements from CECW2 LLC. Mr. President. Mr. Hollenbaugh. I have an ordinance amending and adopting section 94.01 of the codified ordinances of the city of Bowling Green, Ohio, regarding definitions and declaring an emergency. Thank you, Mark. Official reports, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President, uh, members of council, and all assembled. Um, tonight is a bittersweet moment. <clears throat> On one hand, I'm looking forward to a different pace and a different set of activities and challenges. On the other, I hope it is clear to all that I will miss, terribly so, my association with all of you 
and my daily interactions with a terrific and highly professional staff headed by Lori Treader. And I would also add to that uh, John Fawcett. I've had some nice exchanges with John in recent weeks, and he said some very nice things. And I really enjoyed working with John, as I have with Lori and the entire staff. But most especially, I will miss the opportunity to serve the citizens of Bowling Green. We all have been elected to serve the electorate to the best of our abilities, but yet with the full knowledge that we can't always meet the full expectations, hopes, and aspirations of the citizenry. But try, we do. As we prepare to close the calendar year 2019, in my last days in office, and you'll feel, please forgive me, I can't help but be reflective about my career. It began in the middle of my senior year in college when I was presented with the opportunity to join the Washington staff of a newly elected member of Congress, the late Charles A. Mosier of Oberlin, Ohio, who served with distinction in the Congress for 16 years. Prior to going to Washington, he enjoyed an amazing record of service in the Ohio Senate for 10 years. He was also a national award-winning newspaper editor and publisher and a lifetime trustee of Oberlin College. That association had a profound impact on my life my career, my outlook about government, my appreciation for civil liberties, and my deeply embedded belief in the people's right to know. Little did I realize at the beginning of 2011 that I would be ending my career as an elected official in the role of mayor. The thought of running for mayor was first broached several times by the late Wesley Hoffman in 2010. It was a notion that I didn't take too seriously until the question was popped by our longtime city attorney, Mike Marsh. And then it took me about three months, as Mike will recall, uh, to make up my mind. But I want to thank you, Mike, so very, very much for the honor and the opportunity. What an honor it has been to serve with you and others before you over the past eight years. We all know that Bowling Green is a very special place with a distinctive local government history. Over the years, the city of Bowling Green and its officials have been willing to undertake some approaches in government that have been a bit different from the norm. Consider, for example, our independent Board of Public Utilities and its historical application of using a portion of local tax dollars to help fund economic development and to keep utility costs at a much lower rate than most municipalities. And consider as well the city's investments and state-of-the-art utilities and its admirable record of sustainability and renewable energy. And to be sure, the city's independent Community Development Foundation has made a huge different difference in the city's economy and growth. And quite clearly, one cannot ignore the fact that BG is a city that has long capitalized on its relationships with a public university that today is nationally and internationally respected, a public university for the public good. To be sure, our list of strengths as a city is long and impressive. One other distinctive Bowling Green characteristic is the spirit of volunteerism. Contrary to the ebbing of volunteers nationally, we continue to experience and benefit from a volunteer core that is unbelievably strong and healthy. We see this factor at work in so many different ways, whether with the annual Black Swamp Arts Festival the annual holiday parade, or with innumerable other community events involving our Four Corners service organizations, our merchants via downtown Bowling Green, and the most recent innovation of Firefly Nights, all working in concert with and the support of the city of Bowling Green, especially the police and fire divisions, public works, and indeed the administration. From a city government perspective, we have more than 20 committees, commissions, and boards serving this city. We are blessed with so many citizens who are willing to help govern the city in a wide array of volunteer roles and including some citizen-driven efforts not linked directly with the city, such as the East Side Homeowners Association. And I'm so pleased that Rose Hess is here tonight. Rose, thank you for all of your good work over many, many years. Keep it going. And in that context, I marvel at the fact that an internationally respected diplomatic historian, Dr. Gary Hess, a former colleague of mine and longtime friend, served on the city's planning commission for so many years until illness necessitated his stepping aside. 
but he's doing well, and I've been assured of that by Rose tonight. How fortunate we are as a city, and we can only hope that this strength will continue to be a hugely enabling plus for the city in its future. The only element that I find more than a bit paradoxical <coughs> is the seemingly low turnout for city elections, such as the recent school tax and bond levy. <coughs> My admiration and respect for you who serve the city in an elective position is high, and it's been an honor and a pleasure to serve with you. Right from the very beginning, and here I well remember the event at the Claisel in January 2012, when I wanted to make sure that members of city council were introduced to the public along with the then new mayor. The spirit of collaboration has been pronounced and effective, and indeed has reinforced the value of the mayor administrator, council, form of government, most especially from the perspective of the citizens we were elected to represent. Thank you all, and a special thank you for that wonderful event at the Simpson Building last Wednesday. That was, was an emotionally uplifting yet overwhelming experience for, for Nadine and me and for our three daughters. And I want to thank you for the designation I hadn't anticipated at all about Mayor Emeritus. Whatever that means. <laughs> no, I know what it means. <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, thank you, Mike Marsh, again, for your belief in me, and a, and a very special and important thank you to Nadine for developing a keen interest in city government and for your support and understanding, especially during times of acute stress and perplex perplexingly confrontational situations. We won't think of too much about those situations, but... And thank you, Mr. President, for your leadership. You will be an outstanding mayor. Good luck and all the very best to you, Tony, your parents, and indeed your entire family. And with that, I conclude my report. I really, uh, I just wanted to say a few of these things and express my appreciation and thanks. And Nadine, <coughs> I'm going to ask you, would you please stand, because I want to give you... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all very much. I'd be happy to try to answer any questions that you might <laughs> like. Are you really all right in the head? <laughs> <Whatever>. <laughs> Mayor, before I open the floor to questions, I would just um, thank you for your remarks. And also, um, I observed I thought that the uh, event that was um, presented at Simpson Gardens the other day um, was very appropriate and just about what I expected. Um, I had some people tell me, well, I wanted to go, but I couldn't find a parking spot. I looked at all of the parking spots or the streets around the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the center and couldn't find a spot, so I couldn't make it in. But um, I just think that, you know, the, the attendance that they had at that event and the words that we heard are representative of the feelings of this community. Um, and it was uh, terrific to have the opportunity for all of us within our community to express our gratitude um, for your service, and also to Nadine for your service as well, because I, I know that it is a family um, effort. So um, thank you both so much for not only your service as mayor, but your your many, many years of service in this community. Uh, it's a long list of the things that you've contributed, um, going back to the fundraising um, effort for Simpson Garden Park, and um, I, I, I don't want to even start naming things because I'm <laughs> going to forget them. Um, but again, just th th thank you for your service. It was uh, an honor um, for me personally to um, be involved in the ceremony the other day and speak on behalf of our for my peers on city council um, and extend that, that well-earned honor. So thank you for your service. And of course, we wish you well in your retirement. Um, but I'm going to hold you to the fact that you told me you weren't going to leave town. So and you're not going to change your phone <laughs> uh -oh, number, you told no. me. So. <laughs> I appreciate it very much. Yeah, thank you welcome. so much. Thank you, Mr. President, for those wonderful thank thoughts. You. I really appreciate it. It means a great deal to to Nadine and to me as well. Thank you, Mr. Family. Mr. President. Thank you. Um, I was at the uh, the event last week, and I had the, uh, the good fortune of being close enough to walk from home. Didn't have to worry about parking place. <laughs> um, 
And what struck me, and it's something that's been in the back of my mind for a while, is uh, with all the shenanigans going on at the national level, we have uh, a, a dire need to look to uh, examples of public service and role models. <clears throat> and to me, your, your uh, photo should be next to the definition in the dictionary of what public servant is about. Oh, and it's not just the eight years of being mayor, but if you look at your entire career, it's been public service in so many different areas. And I want to thank you, A, for the public service, and B, for su being such an example. If somebody needs to look around and look for an example of a public servant, look no further than that man over there. And uh, it's, it's been an honor to, to interact with you and, and see you in action. Thank you, Bill. So thank it's ever you. so thoughtful. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, I've enjoyed working with you. I parked illegally. You know, I, 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 I had no choice. Well, the, the good news uh, is we have two people uh, sitting back here that look, turn their heads the other I way. Walking out I, 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 I sense we, you know. we were also uh, in violation of the Bowling Green occupancy law. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's right. Right. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, thank you. That was Appreciate great. <clears throat> thank you, Mayor. <laughs> Municipal Administrator, Ms. Treader. All right, we have some upcoming holidays, so want to remind you um, that we will have some changes to um, building openings and uh, collection times. So City Hall closes at 1 p.m. on both Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. So if people have business they need to take care of here in this building, um, they should do so. And uh, trash and recycling will not be collected on Christmas Day. That's Wednesday. So it means that Wednesday will be collected on Thursday and Thursday will be collected on Friday. Do I have that right, Brian? Okay. So, so <clears throat> Monday and Tuesday are the same. So including Christmas Eve, uh, trash will be picked up that day. And, um, you know, sometimes because I make some of the same reminders each year, um, you know, I don't want to feel like a broken record, but there is a point I, I make every year, and it's because I, I do feel so strongly about it that, you know, we have employees that work 24-7. And so while we're enjoying holidays with our families, um, our police, our fire, people at the treatment plants, other people in the city are on call all the time to respond. And so we certainly do appreciate their service um, to keep all of us safe, to to continue to have our community um, as wonderful as it is. And that's all I have this evening, subject to your questions. Questions for Lori. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Planning Director, Ms. Saylor. Questions for Heather. Thank you. Parks and Recreation Director, Ms. Otley. Good evening. A um, couple things. I'll, I'll pass these out after I look at it because I remember what I'm saying here. But uh, we have a couple activities coming up at the community center. And so those of us that have uh, school-age children are very palpably aware of the fact that they are going to be out of school for two and a half weeks. They are very excited about this, as are we. Um, but after the week of Christmas, um, you may be looking for some things for them to do. So... Uh, the Monday of uh, New Year's week, uh, we have Happy New Year Monday countdown to fun at the community center uh, from 1130 to 5. Uh, and this is ages 5 to 12. There's a lot more information here. It's on our website. Um, and then that Friday as well, we have a Friday fun day, same time frame. Um, they'll get fed. They'll get to do some active stuff in the gym, do some crafts, uh, and just get out and uh, get a get around and get some of that energy burnt off so and have some fun with friends so that is coming up i'll pass those out to you um and if you are a procrastinator as far as gifts 
Uh, we do have gift certificates available at Bowling Green Parks and Recreation that are able to be used in, for any of our programs or facilities. And so uh, grandparents, especially if you have grandkids, things like uh, gift certificates for a pool pass in the summer, a lot more appreciated by parents than um, toys that maybe fill up a toy room. Speaking from a parent who just cleaned one out, my children did, not myself. So um, that is an option. Those are available at either the Simpson Building or the Community Center. And other than that, uh, just a reminder that there is no Bicycle Safety Commission meeting this month, so do not show up here tomorrow at 6 o'clock. Um, and Park Board will not be meeting this month as well. Uh, because that would be Christmas Eve at seven o'clock, so we we're gonna we're gonna skip that one this month. So um, press release went out earlier today. So that's all I have, unless you have questions. Questions for Kristen. Thank you. Thanks. City Attorney, Mr. Marsh. Questions for Mr. Marsh. Thank you, Utilities Director, Mr. O'Connell. I just want to give you a uh, update or a. Uh, uh, issue with last Friday, we had our power outage on the south end of town, took out a large area, a little bit strange for us um, with our very reliable system, but the total outage time was about 35 minutes from uh, start, start to finish. Um, it was due to a, a traffic-related accident down at the uh, South Maple and uh, Gypsy Lane intersection. Our substation down there is, is at, at that uh, intersection, and a, a semi-truck turned a corner too short, hit a guy wire, caused poles to move around when that guy wire was pulled pulled the guy wire didn't actually break but it did shake the poles and the wires that caused a arrestor or a, a insulator back in the substation to, to default and break um tripped out the substation so everybody, everybody that was tied or connected to that substation uh was out of power but within that 35 minutes we were able to uh reinstall a new one um check all the systems out make sure everything was uh back to square one and put it back into operation so pretty good response time for the most part for such a large uh, large outage. In most cases, that wouldn't have caused the whole system to trip out. Usually would, you might see a small uh, part of the city or a small circuit to, to trip out. Um, but because it was right next door to the substation um, and the, the fault actually went back into the substation, um, that's why it tripped out. But um, good response time from the guys for the most part. And it was Friday the thir 13th, so I'm going to blame it on the, on the gremlins. <laughs> that day. Um, but that's all I have. Unless you have questions. Questions for Brian. The, uh, was Brian. the driver cited? Yeah, so I think the uh, police did find the driver. Um, uh, he was going back to a business that was back on South Maple Street there. Um, I think they did file charges. So usually what we'll do is we'll we'll gather up our costs, send that That's over to the... my next question. Is there a way to recoup any costs? Yeah, normally so if, it's, if it's a traffic-related accident, we send that uh, our time, any equipment or materials we used in making those repairs, we send that to the... Uh, prosecutor, and they try to get uh, collection for us from from the driver's insurance or whoever's responsible party was. So that's a typical practice for us. Very good. Yes. Very good. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Public Works Director, Mr. Kraft. Questions for Brian? Thank you. That concludes our official reports. Thank you for those reports. <coughs> council committee reports. Do we have council committee reports this evening? Uh, Mr. President, <coughs> from the uh, <coughs> from the committee of the uh, soon to hit the bricks council members, <laughs> I'd like to <laughs> like to follow the mayor's lead here. I don't have a prepared statement, and I really appreciate um, the mayor's ability to put things. In perspective and uh, I won't repeat all the nice things everybody has, has said about you mr. mayor but uh, I've certainly enjoyed following your lead when appropriate when we disagreed I always felt confident that we could disagree agreeably and so uh, I appreciate working with you and uh, I see our good friend Neil Cleese Leontis in the back and I just want to acknowledge that uh, I feel that Neil Cleese beat me fair and square and I am very optimistic that you will come to council in a few weeks and do great things. And so I look forward to your ideas uh, working out and see what happens there. And I just look around the room and see the different department heads and people from the press and other, um, other folks here. And I won't go through the whole list, but I've certainly 
enjoyed my eight years of working with with all of you. And uh, there's a great saying, don't be sad that something has ended. Be glad that you had the opportunity. One person I am going to point out is the person who knows more about city council than anybody and keeps us on track, and that is Kay Sherrick, and it has really made things a lot easier having you to work with and discuss things with and keep us all straight, and I surely appreciate that, Kay. Thank you very much. And I will, I will speak about one council member, and the rest of you will just have to not be offended, and, and uh, I'm, I just, uh, Mike, while we're sitting here beside each other, I just want to tell you how much uh, <clears throat> I value our collegial relationship on council and our friendship and and uh, I, sort of like the mayor, we agreed on many things. And when we, when we didn't agree, I always felt confident that um, you would listen to me and we would work things out. So it's been great working with you. And at that, I'll just stop talking. Thank you, Bruce. <laughs> Appreciate those remarks. We will find a time in the future to... Uh, adequately express our appreciation for your for your uh, contributions to our city. Thank you. Are there any other council committee reports? Seeing none, Kay, would you please lead us through the reading of legislation? <coughs> legislation for first reading. Resolution number 3751 for first reading. Resolution transferring previously appropriated funds. Mr. President, Mr. Jeffers, I move that we suspend the rules and give resolution 3751 at second and third readings. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Kay, would you please call the roll? Harold? Yes. Hollenbaugh? Yes. Jeffers? Yes. Robinette? Yes. Roland? Yes. Zamperdino? Yes. Osbacher? Yes. Motion passes. The rules are suspended for resolution 3751. Resolution number 3751 for second and third reading. Resolution transferring previously appropriated funds. Ms. President. Mr. Jeffers. I move we adopt resolution 3751. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Okay, would you please call the roll? Hollenbaugh. Yes. Jeffers. Yes. Robinette. Yes. Roland. Yes. Zanfordino. Yes. Ospacher. Yes. Harold. Yes. Motion passes. Resolution 3751 is adopted. Ordinance number 8810 for first reading. Ordinance providing supplemental appropriations for the current expenses and other expenditures of the City of Bowling Green, Ohio during the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2019 and ending December 31, 2019. Mr. President. Mr. Jeffers. I move we suspend the rules and give Ordinance 8810 its second and third readings. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Kay, would you please call the roll? Jeffers? Yes. Robinette? Yes. Roland? Yes. Sanfordino? Yes. Osbacher? Yes. Harold? Yes. Hollenbach? <clears throat> yes. Motion passes. The rules are suspended for Ordinance 8810. Ordinance number 8810 for second and third reading. Ordinance providing supplemental appropriations for the current expenses and other expenditures of the City of Bowling Green, Ohio during the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2019 and ending December 31, 2019. Mr. President, Mr. Jeff, we move we adopt Ordinance 8810. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Okay, would you please call the roll? Robinette? Yes. Roland? Yes. Zanfordino? Yes. Osbacher? Yes. Harold? Yes. Hollenbaugh? Yes. Jeffers? Yes. Motion passes. Ordinance 8810 is adopted. Ordinance number 8811 for first reading. Ordinance to provide appropriations for the current for the expenses and other expenditures of the City of Bowling Green, Ohio, for the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2020, and ending December 31, 2020. Mr. President. Mr. Jeffers. I move that we suspend the rules and give Ordinance 8811 its second reading. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Kay, would you please call the roll? <clears throat> Roland. Yes. Zanfordino. Yes. Osbacher? Yes. Harold? Yes. Hollenbaugh? Yes. Jeffers? Yes. Robinette? Yes. Motion passes. The rules are suspended for Ordinance 8810. 8811. I'm sorry, 8811. Thank you. Huh? Ordinance number 8811 for second reading. Ordinance to provide appropriations for the expenses and other expenditures of the City of Bowling Green, Ohio, 
for the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2020 and ending December 31, 2020. Mr. President. Mr. Robinette. I would like uh, here in a moment to, uh, we'll make an, uh, a, a, a suggest an amendment to the budget, but first I'd like to uh, take a moment to explain my thought process. Uh, I think there's, um, well, there's, there's a lot to like about the budget. Uh, the continuing quality and, uh, and efficient uh, public services, including our police, fire, and municipal court are all covered. I, uh, we've got funds provided for a robust residential road paving program. I think that's a, that's a, it's a high point. We've got funding for comprehensive update to our zoning code, which is critically important for economic development success well into the future. But I do have a couple of concerns. Um, and the primary concern is the um, requested increase uh, to the uh, refuge recycling fee of $2. And I really think that um, we have an opportunity, or we should at least examine the possibility of moving forward with the budget without that. And I'm not suggesting that, uh, and this is independent of any decision on recycling. We can all agree that perhaps that, that the, the new recycling program is a good thing. But while the increase in costs to our recycling program um, may be a reason for the fee, I'm not convinced that it justifies it. And by that, I mean there may be other mechanisms within the budget to do what we need to do. Um, I think it's unfortunate that, that we've been in a, a bit of a compressed time frame here. Um, to examine any pr potential alternatives, I will uh, express my gratitude to uh, the administrator and deputy administrator for taking time last week to talk to me about um, the details of, of what went into the, the entire budget process, especially the thinking behind the uh, additional uh, $2 fee or the increase to the $13 fee of $2. Um, but I, I really want to point out that I think collectively as a council, and this, this goes not just this council, but previous councils, much of the deficit we're trying, we're attempting to mitigate with that $2 increase is self-inflicted. Um, you know, despite a, a functional plan to set aside and earmark funds for the 27th pay period, you know, over an 11 year period, previous councils chose to use funds for other purposes. Okay, that, that was a decision. Uh, or, or a number of decisions. Um, the extended parking holiday, as good an idea as it probably was, it still cost the city nearly $64,000. That was a decision that we made um, to put ourselves uh, a little bit in a hole. Even the, um, and this increase in, um, in the recycling fees that we're uh, considering uh, to keep our recycling program afloat uh, is a decision. And again, I'm not, this isn't a discussion. I don't pretend to uh, know what, what the city collectively thinks, whether that's a good or a bad idea, but it's still a decision uh, that goes into the, uh, to the process. Um, so having said that, I would uh, uh, move that we amend the budget to remove the increased fee <coughs> of $2. So, Mr. President, um, once, uh, once that is seconded, uh, further discussion is uh, is prohibited. Correct. So maybe before it's seconded, if there's any other council members that wish to uh, say something about it, speak now. Assuming that it's seconded, would would um, in, in terms of Robert's rules, if it's seconded. Is that a non-debatable motion? Do you know that off the top of your head? To amend by substitution? Just to uh, amend. Just to, we'll amend. Just amend. Yeah, just to amend. Yes. It's not a debatable motion. Okay. Yeah. Well, you seem to be accurate, so yeah. We'll I, I have, I have a time. question. Um, are, are you suggesting that in lieu of the $2 um, that we seek out other cuts within the budget to address that shortcoming or um, there, cl clearly we would have to find another way to to balance the budget i'm suggesting there are other ways that we have not considered and that the bu budget as presented to us here um as presented to the um 
to the Finance Committee recently had but one way forward, and that other ways forward, given all the things that we, I just talked about in terms of reasons why we're in the position we're in. I, again, this is my opinion. I believe that we could um, find other ways to to close that gap. But Mr. You, President, you're not think. I mean, you don't have anything specific in mind, or I don't at at this moment. I realize that we're 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 under a tight time frame here. But you know, before the detailed analysis of where we start making changes and propose changes to the budget, I think it would be prudent to sense get the sensing of where this council sits on the uh, on the issue uh, before it, any time or effort is spent. Um, again, the, the progress is we were presented the budget at the uh, finance committee meeting. Uh, you know, we all digested it. I went and, you know, read it for a while. I had a few questions for Lori. She agreed and we met. Uh, she and Joe and I met to discuss my concerns and problems. We spoke for about an hour and a half. It was a great discussion. I took that information. This was just last week. Uh, mulled over it some and, and uh, decided that this is, this is the proposal that I would like to make. Again, the challenge I have is I realize that we're under a very tight timeline. And I'll talk a little bit later here in a, in a moment in the meeting on a, on a way I think we can help mitigate that in the future. It doesn't change my feeling and it doesn't change my belief that this is the right thing to do. But we are where we are. If I can make a comment there, um, Mr. Robinette, I think as far as the tight time frame, I think that might be a little... Um, uh, confusing. Um, in my time on council, <clears throat> each year we've we've gotten better and better about interacting with the administration on the budget. Um, by our charter, it's the administration's budget to present, and then we can approve or not approve. But um, you know, we've we, we've wanted to have more input over the last several years, and I think we've had that. Uh, we have strategic planning meetings every January, and we lay out our priorities. Um, I think earlier and earlier, we've we've had special meetings where the council could um, discuss with the administration what we wanted to see in the budget, what our priorities would be. Uh, also, I think that the vast majority of our budget is, is determined by the services that people expect to receive and other projects that we might like to develop. Um, that's a very small part of the budget. So I don't know, it just seems a little, little, odd, <clears throat> little odd based on my experience with this council to, to look at the whole budget and pick out one little thing that you don't like and, and want to change that. And not, not that you don't have some good points, but, uh, uh, that's my take on this. All right. Well, let me say, first of all, I agree with everything you just said, Bruce. I think I think the administration has done a tremendous job, and I think this council has done a great job of, of over the period of years, uh, <laughs> making our views and uh, desires known. And then I, that's what I said in my opening remarks. There are so many things in this budget that are directly reflective of, of the priorities that council has set. And they're in there. Our, our desire to move forward with, with the zoning code, up. Our, our, our desire to pave roads, uh, these these are items. The budget includes all of that. What none of us asked for nor anticipated, however, was this this increase in the uh, fee that was presented <coughs> as a proposal as a, as a solution by the administration. That's fair. But that wasn't. I mean, that's outside the scope of what we had been talking about in our in our priorities. And because of that, I'm just reviewing it in the context of the whole budget and, and, and as we move forward. And again, maybe I'm the only one with that view. That's okay. But I do believe that, you know, perhaps, you know, we, we start moving down a slippery slope of, of fees here. I just think we could, or at least have an opportunity, um, to, to find another means of, of closing that gap uh, rather than the $2 fee. Again, my opinion and my opinion only. And, um, uh, but it, I, this is not a hit on, on, uh, on the budget itself. But it's a great budget. You know, I agree with almost everything in there. Ninety-nine percent of it. They do. It does reflect a recognition of our priorities. You're absolutely right. 
<coughs> Mr. President, um, if I might say, two years ago, the majority of us uh, were on council, and we sat in this room um, and studied the big problem that we really have. The problem is not the re add on of $2 for recycling. The problem is constantly our general fund is hit with something that takes away what we anticipate and we end up in the same boat every year. And it's going to happen again. It's just, it's going to happen again. Um, when we studied what to do regarding the general budget, and that's what this is all about at all, this comes out of our general budget. We, as a council, studied every avenue that we could think of to reduce costs, to take money from Peter to pay Paul. Um, we wanted to be conservative. We wanted to be responsible for our taxpayers. No one on council wants to raise, raise taxes or charge fees. We wanted to do what was responsible, and we were very conservative. And perhaps we were too, too conservative. I don't know. It would have to be studied in the future to determine that. But in my judgment, what the $2 is, is, is not necessarily a recycling fee. It's an ongoing problem with our general fund that was brought about primarily from decisions not made by this council, decisions made on the state level that took away the municipal funds, decisions made on the state level that took away um, what they referred to as the death penalty, um, taxes, um, survive, uh, estate taxes. Yes, that's what I was trying to think. They referred to it as a death penalty. Um, and we also lost some Warner Cable, um, cable fees. We went through the Greatest Depression in history. We went through a million dollars of losses from the state municipal fund. We went through the estate tax, losing some fund, and um, the Warner Cable leaving, leaving us without any funding that we had anticipated for years to come. And we, we did well. We need to pat ourselves on the back. And I think that there is time in the future. We're going to have a new mayor. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Future Mayor, you may want to discuss in the future if we need to take another look and study the general fund. Um, and see if we can somehow build in a system that's going to not constantly hit us with every budget that we're going to be short on the general fund. We don't want to raise fees. I don't want to raise fees. Yes, there's a time crunch. I, I just think this, this, this has to be done. It's an unknown um, consequence of the market and um, recyclables that no one has anticipated, and, and I just want to move on pass this budget, and then maybe study in the year or so that general fund budget. Take a second look and see if we did things right and if we need to. Thank you. Mr. Thank President, you. Um, I'd like to reiterate uh, what Sandy has said about I, I would hope that in the upcoming year that we'll take a very comprehensive look at what seems to be an ongoing systemic issue and come up with a long-term solution so that we don't have to keep uh, raising this fee every couple years. Um, also, I mean, I, was, I wasn't on council uh, when this issue came up, but I was on the planning commission, and uh, I wasn't keen on having a fee, although I understand that it's necessary um, for budgetary issues. Uh, that being said, I, I will second uh, what Greg has said. At some point after everyone's spoken or now? No, I just did it just now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a, a motion and a second. Um, just to be specific, Greg, in your motion, you're moving to exclude Section 5 of the, of the uh, budget ordinance which pertains specifically to um, the $2 recycling fee. Is that correct? Yes. Very good. So we have a motion and a second on the table. Um, Kay, would you please call the roll? Zanfordino? No. Osbacher? No. Harold? Yes. Hollenbaugh? No. Jeffers? No. Robinette? Yes. Roland? No. 
The motion fails. It is not approved. <clears throat> ordinance number 8812 for first reading ordinance authorizing the municipal administrator to enter into a contract or contracts with republic services for the acceptance of mixed recyclables and declaring an emergency mr president mr jeffers i move that we give ordinance 8812 its second reading second moved and seconded okay would you please call the roll Osbacher? Yes. Harold? Yes. Hollenbaugh? Yes. Jeffers? Yes. Robinette? Yes. Roland? Yes. Zanfordino? Yes. Motion passes. The rules are suspended for Ordinance 8812. Ordinance number 8812 for second reading. Ordinance authorizing the municipal administrator to enter into a contract or contracts with Republic Services for the acceptance of mixed recyclables and declaring an emergency. Ordinance number Mr. eight President, eight. May I say something about eight eight one two before the next ones? <clears throat> sure. Um, we have uh, the third reading coming up at our last meeting, and it's the intent to pass the emergency clause. Emergency clause needs at least five affirmative votes. Um, it is Christmasish time. Well, it is Christmas time for the next meeting, the end of the year. Uh, Perhaps it would be prudent to have a motion to adopt the emergency clause just in case for some one reason or another we don't have the, uh, the necessary five people in attendance. Are you saying that in, ter in terms of a motion? Are you making a motion? I'm kind of hinting at it. I'm just make saying if, if... Make it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. President. Mr. Harold. I move that we adopt the emergency clause for ordinance 8812. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Okay, would you please call the roll? Harold? Yes. Hollenbaugh? Yes. Jeffers? Yes. Robinette? Yes. Roland? Yes. Zanfordino? Yes. Osbacher? Yes. Motion passes. The emergency clause is adopted for ordinance 8812. One three. I'm sorry. Oh, one no, two. One two. One two. <laughs> yep. one, two. Yeah. One two. One and one. Ordinance number 8813 for first reading. Ordinance amending and adopting sections 150.03, 150.16, 150.55, 150.90, 150.92, and 150.103 of the codified ordinances of the City of Bowling Green, Ohio, regarding zoning code regulations. Mr. President. Mr. Robinette. I would like to uh, set for public hearing the, uh, 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 this ordinance uh, January 21st. At 6.45 p.m. <clears throat> Thank you, Greg. Ordinance number 8814 for first reading. Ordinance accepting utility easements from CECW2 LLC. Ordinance number 8815 for first reading. Ordinance amending and adopting section 94.01 of the codified ordinances of the City of Bowling Green, Ohio, regarding definitions and declaring an emergency. Mr. President. Mr. Hollenbaugh. I move we suspend the rules and give Ordinance 8810 its second reading. Second. Eight. 8815. Eight, 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 oh, one five. What did I say? Zero. Oh. Five. Four. Who seconded it? I did. <clears throat> Moved and seconded. Kay, would you please call the roll? Hollenbaugh. I presume yes. Jeffers. Yes. Robinette. Yes. Roland. Yes. Zanfordino. Yes. Osbacher? Yes. Harold? Yes. Motion passes. The rules are suspended for Ordinance 8815. Ordinance number 8815 for second reading. Ordinance amending and adopting Section 94.01 of the codified ordinances of the City of Bowling Green, Ohio, regarding definitions and declaring an emergency. Mr. President? Mr. Hollenbaugh. Utilizing the Herald Clause, <laughs> I would suggest that we go ahead and... Uh, Give Ordinance 8815 uh, the emergency clause reading tonight. Is your suggestion in the form of a motion? In a motion, yeah. Thank you. I second the motion to adopt the emergency clause for Ordinance 8815. It's been moved and seconded. <laughs> Kay, would you please call the roll? Jeffers? Yes. Robinette? Yes. Roland? Yes. Zanfordino? Yes. Osbacher? Yes. Harold? Yes. Hollenbach? Yes. Motion passes. The emergency clause is adopted for Ordinance 8815. There is no legislation for second reading, so we move on to third reading. 
Resolution number 3749 for third reading, resolution authorizing the mayor of the city of Bowling Green, Ohio, to file an annual application and a five-year consolidated plan and execute a contract upon grant application approval under the Community Development Block Grant Entitlement Program as authorized by the Housing and Community Development Act of 1974 as amended. Mr. President. Mr. Hollenbaugh. I move that we adopt resolution 3749. Second. second. Moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? <coughs> okay, would you please call the roll? Robinette. Yes. Roland. Yes. Zanfordino. Yes. Osbacher. Yes. Harold. Yes. Hollenbaugh. Yes. Jeffers. Yes. Motion passes. Resolution 3749 is adopted. Ordinance number 8809 for third reading. Ordinance authorizing the municipal administrator to request proposals and enter into a contract for the purchase of transportation service for the BG or the Bowling Green Transit Program. Mr. President. Mr. Zamperdino. I move that we adopt ordinance 8809. Second. second. Move and seconded. Is there any discussion? Okay, would you please call the roll? Roland? Yes. Zamperdino? Yes. Osbacher? Yes. Harold? Yes. Hollenbaugh? Yes. Jeffers? Yes. Robinette? Yes. Motion passes. Ordinance 8809 is adopted. That completes the items on our agenda this evening. Is there any other business to come before council? Mr. President. Mr. Robinette. There, there are two items I, I'd like to bring up just briefly, um, and that I will bring up again at the first meeting of our, of our new term after we elect a new council president and start a new year's business. Uh, the first is I'd like to reiterate that I, I, I truly believe that the budget the administration prepared was an outstanding budget and it reflects the hard work that went into it. However, I, I will recommend that in order to help stay ahead or, or keep abreast of any challenges, uh, that the Finance Committee next year at, uh, meet on a quarterly basis at a minimum to discuss budget in terms of what, where how it's going and, and any possible just get into a program of, of, of a quarterly meeting as opposed to an as-needed as meeting, which can happen anyway. So I'll propose that again, but I think that would be beneficial. That if, even if we only met quarterly, only if the Finance Committee only met quarterly, <coughs> that would still be three thorough meetings prior to any fourth quarter discussion of the budget. Just, just one idea to help, uh, help uh, move us in that direction. The second thing I'm going to uh, request or suggest, and this is also related to uh, a key budget item, and that is the... The budget allocates the funds for the zoning code review. But once we, you know, having the funds is, is only part of the battle. We've also got a, a large challenge ahead of us in defining the terms that we're, and, and the criteria that we're going to uh, require of, of the uh, consultant in doing the work. Uh, and I, I, I strongly, I'm going to strongly suggest that the Planning, Zoning, and Economic Development Committee start meeting sooner rather than later next year to start developing that specific guidance for the consultant uh, and uh, and for the review and recommendation uh, of the changes to the zoning code, including reviewing and, and validating that uh, zoning diagnostic report that I think is due to us here in the near future, which will be key to that as well. In any case, I'm just previewing that now. I will bring that up again, but I think those are two thick, key, going to be two big deals for us next year. And the sooner we get started on that, the, the planning zoning or the uh, zoning code review process, the timing is critical because it's going to take a year at least for that process to work with a consultant once we sign a contract. And we can't sign a contract until we define really what we want. We've got a lot of homework and legwork to do before we get to the point where we can even get a contract out. And I'm hoping that we can make that as short a period as possible so that the hard work that we're going to pay for can start sooner. And then we can, again, you know, see the results uh, much sooner. So thank you for your indulgence. And uh, Merry Christmas to everybody. Thank you, Greg. Is there any other business to come before council this evening? Seeing none, is there a motion for adjournment? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone, and would like to wish you all a very happy holiday season and a Merry Christmas.